Hi everyone, my name's Pat and uh, I work at eTool and I'd like to spend the next uh, five minutes or so uh, running you through a very quick demonstration of uh, initial demonstration of, of eTool lifecycle assessment software, uh, some of its core functionality, uh, what it can do and, and how easy it is hopefully to, to, to make your own lifecycle assessments. We've, uh, we've built the tool with the idea in mind that lifecycle assessment is one of the most robust uh, methods for understanding the true environmental footprint of, of a building project and, uh, and hence prioritizing the, the right uh, strategies for, for reducing that, that footprint. So we built the tool uh, for ease of use, it's web-based and, and, and anybody on the design team can, can uh, uh, get involved in LCA and start building their own LCA model. You really don't need a huge amount of construction knowledge or LCA knowledge to, to start uh, building your own LCAs. We hope that it's, uh, it's intuitive and, 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 uh, and straightforward. We've also built a business model so that it can be accessible for any size project. So the, uh, the software is open use for non-commercial gain. That means that uh, anyone can jump into the software and start running their own LCAs and making better buildings and better design decisions. Uh, but if they want to sell their results, promote the the analysis that they've done in terms of carbon footprint or whatever it might be, or use it for a bream or for lead, uh, then we ask that you certify the model and we have to charge a, uh, a small fee that's a, a function of the construction budget and we apply it again for, for any size project, large or small, and uh, for that fee we'll go and we'll jump, jump into your model and provide some feedback and support uh, and check how accurate it is and how it compares to similar models within our database. Um, hopefully they're creating a, a nice community of learning and, uh, and, and building of, of knowledge around LCA of buildings. So what you're looking at here is a structure level of a, of a project and there might be you know, a few different buildings within this project or a few different model iterations within this project and there'll be some generic data that we apply to everything. Things like where is it located, what's the data source that we want to use, that's the, the, the carbon coefficients, etc., that attach to each material, uh, electricity grid emission factors, gas grid emission factors, uh, water grid emission factors, etc. What I'm going to do is jump into a multi-residential uh, building and what you see here is some life cycle stages, people that come to put the building together, equipment that they use to, to build the thing, uh, the materials that actually go into it, your foundations, your, your walls, your floors, your finishes, etc. Uh, and then the running of the building, your operational energy and your operational uh, water, water and energy that's used by the occupants. On the right here, we see uh, those, those things with the same data broken down a little bit differently. So um, product material stage, transport of those materials, constructing them, recurring, so replacing the, the carpets, the paint, the, the, the floors, etc. Uh, energy use, water use, and then end of life uh, impacts. Nothing lasts forever. The building will get demolished eventually, and there will be impacts associated with what happens to those materials once the building is demolished. And you do get some credit for certain materials when they are recycled or reused within, uh, outside of the building. Uh, so how's this model being built? What are we looking at here? The, what we do is we have uh, templates and a big, big library of, of the different uh, templates for different construction elements. And I will jump into the overall embodied template here and uh, we'll see a number of different uh, templates within this total embodied structure of this uh, multi-residential apartment building and uh, I might jump into uh, concrete floor here. We see that that's got some quite significant impacts compared to, to the others. And uh, this is basically, when we're building a model, we'll add all these different templates. We'll, uh, a lot of them are, are done by meters squared, so we'll have x meters squared of walls, x meters squared of windows, x meters squared of floors, etc. Uh, but within those templates, there's a number of different materials that are included within this wall element. 
or floor element or roof element, whatever it might be. So in this case, we just have a basic concrete floor uh, with uh, yeah concrete, the formwork required to put pour, uh, hold this concrete in place whilst it's being poured, and we have some steel reinforcement there as well, and we also have the um, uh, assembly impacts for, for for this floor. So we have some people that come and, and pour this concrete, install the Rio, install the formwork, etc. And we have some uh, uh, assembly um, equipment that is required. So in this case, probably just a, a, a concrete pump. Yeah, and how long's uh, that in use for and the impacts associated with that. So we've grab, grabbed the life cycle impacts of this floor element simply by adding in a uh, meter squared of floor uh, with all these other, other materials and, and uh, assembly impacts captured, on a, uh, aggregated, I suppose, on a per meter square basis. So we add in, yeah, the, all of these other building elements to create a, a true picture of our, of our building. Once we have that, we want to um, start to think about reducing those impacts. Uh, so we can see a nice picture here, what are things to focus on. Okay, yeah, the concrete was significant. Um, so what we'll then do is run recommendations. Uh, similar to the template library, we have a big library of different recommendations that we like to run on, on projects. And we can record the effect, the change that we make on a, on a design. and. Uh, and yeah, normally we'll have a big list of recommendations that we can run, and we see very quickly uh, what the big ticket items are things that we can have a big change, are going to affect a big change on the design. Uh, uh, so straight away there, you see that solar PV is jumping out as big life cycle uh, reduction in global warming potential. Um, we might be worried about the trade-off between these things, so we'd click again between uh, one of these other environmental indicators and see if there's there's uh, savings still from all these elements. In this case, for acidification, uh, there still is, but um, sometimes, uh, sometimes there isn't. Uh, so yeah, normally you have a big list of recommendations. Uh, we have this detailed model that, although has been built up very quickly and efficiently, has a huge amount of data and background information that's, that's going into building this, this life cycle picture of, of, of this building. Uh, we don't have to rely on, on this uh, industry average data. We can also add in environmental product declarations. That's when a manufacturer has done their own life cycle assessment of their specific product. Um, we can add those in. Um, once we've done, once we have a complete model, we have an idea of the, these recommendations, we probably want to start looking at how to present these results. We have uh, automated reports. We're not a big fan of copy and pasting things into into charts and documents and, and uh, uh, finding you know errors and redoing the whole thing. So we automate the, the reports wherever we can. Here's an example of one uh, life cycle assessment report where we'll have you know some big detail there on what's going on in this life cycle assessment, some scope, some big uh, goals of the study, a general life cycle assessment report and some different ways there of uh, presenting the data and uh, summary there, there's our recommendations list. We can quickly prioritize uh, what's the cost of these recommendations and uh, what, how's the, the, how, how big an impact are they going to have and how, what can we get the best, best value for money with best uh, environmental benefit. Um, so that's about all I can show you in that short space of time. Please come along to uh, one of our next webinars. Uh, well, I'll go into, into the nitty-gritty of LCA and uh, modeling ETIL uh, in, in a bit more detail. Thank you very much.